Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. This is Dawn at Affordable Desert Living. And today is a really important topic. It's all about my solar panels. And I'll be really honest, um, hmm. This has been several months I've had them up and they've never been grounded. So that means that if an electric storm came through here, it could be a little dicey. So obviously I need to get this whole thing grounded for safety reasons. So let's get going and ground this thing. So for safety reasons and not wanting to get fried, I chose to unhook the panels at night when they weren't carrying any power. Yeah. I think I disconnected enough stuff and I should be safe tomorrow. That's a little too tight, so I'm going to go under there and move this support 2x6 over a hair to make a little space there. So in order to do that, I'm going to uh, have to tap these 2x6s over just a little bit to make a bit more room here. So I've already taken the screws out of this hurricane tie to loosen it so I can move everything that way just a little bit. So now we'll just uh, <coughs> loosen the, uh, <coughs> the nuts and bolts that hold this together and uh, so that we can take these two panels off and then flip them around the right way they're supposed to go. So I'll take the bottom panel off first to get that out of the way and then the top one will slide right down the rails here followed behind it. So one thing about the way these solar panels attach to the unit strap, um, kind of a tight space. There, that's loose enough. I can slide that because there's a cone nut in that railing and so we'll do the others. This top panel I had mistakenly put on incorrectly so that it needed to be flipped horizontally. So that naturally meant I had to take the bottom one off completely to gain access to it. While I had them off, I decided to replace some damaged cone nuts from when I last put them up. Fortunately, keeping the cone nuts in the Unistrut track can be a bit of a challenge. Oh, seriously? So, run into some hurdles today. Not a happy camper. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is put a couple solar panels on the, the right direction. My fault. Should have put them in the right direction in the first place. How does something this fragile hold 40 pounds being shoved up and down Unistrut? I've gone through four of them now. My spares are gone. Now it's time to drive 17 miles to Home Depot. But I'm going to make it worthwhile. I am going to get two grounding rods that I need and some other supplies. So we'll make Lemons out of lemonade. No, that's not right. We'll make lemonade out of lemons. That's it. One possible reason why these cone nuts were getting destroyed was the angle of these 2x6s, which I believe have warped, but also I could have been more precise in putting them on.
I took a break and I'm like, okay, the wind has calmed down. Let's do a solar panel. But no, right at the perfect time, I'm walking by one solar panel, okay, with the other and the wind blows everything. So knocks them both down. This one now has a big scratch in it. Solar panels that were brand new, all scratched to snot. Not happy. Quite naturally, if lightning strikes the solar array, it will run down the metal unit struts, but can't jump to another row of panels. This copper tubing will be used as an electrical pathway and then travel to the ground wire. The copper tubing has to be flattened in order to make it fit. I just uh, did a guess at Ace Hardware and got this nut and bolt assembly. And the great thing is they fit right up in those holes in the solar panels perfectly. So that was just a wonderful stroke of luck. And what you'll see here is, is I've got a, a bolt and a washer and then this star washer for extra grip. And the nut here has a, uh, a star-like uh, grip on it as well. I thought I had the holes drilled perfectly in the copper tube. I was wrong. As they say, I'll be back. Second try and now a perfect fit. So this is an important item. This here is going to be used to attach to the uh, solar panel frame. And this is where I'm going to run the copper wire. And there's a set screw that will tighten down on it. Dropping things is always part of the fun. Yep, dropped it down my pants. So now we'll loosen the set screw here to get ready to receive the copper wire. That looks like it'll do it. So I'm going to measure out about 12 feet and cut that off and then use that as a guideline for um, the trench that I'm going to dig to bury it. And it doesn't have to be super exact. go. Well, I was going to do Pilates today, um, but I thought, uh, no, I'll just dig a trench instead for exercise. I recently bought a new trenching shovel, but my conclusion, it's not very useful for really hard soil like I have. Time to call in the garden hose and soften things up with water. When you put the pick in, 
the soil comes up sometimes in pieces like big pieces of cake. So I'm going to make an educated guess that most of you folks, your favorite cake is German chocolate. Okay, now mine is coconut layer cake. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I'd say a prayer with every heartbeat. How will I know if she really loves me? So as you can see folks, this, uh, this uh, trench is um, um, almost 18 inches deep and uh, that's the recommended uh, depth for burying um, ground wire. So um, we're going to call it good. Well, while I was digging the trench I was thinking about this lovely lemonade and brownies. Well. I don't think I need the brownies, so the lemonade's going to work. Well, the boss said I couldn't go home until I got this grounding rod in the ground. I mean, really, I thought I could go home after I dug the trench, but, you know, he's just really, really difficult, so... Okay, we're making progress. Of course, folks are probably saying, why does this guy have a sledgehammer? Um, I just haven't bought one yet. Got my gloves on, Simon. Let's try this rig. Ooh, it's heavy. Plug your ears, folks. Good cardio. Don't know whether it went in any, though. Okay, slight problem. I had two slightly over 12 foot pieces of copper grounding wire, but the problem? I miscalculated the combination of the length of the wire needed and the depth of the trench. Yep, back to Home Depot. Well, I'm back from Home Depot today with, you guessed it, more copper wire. Hopefully I got enough this time. Um, and I thought about getting an ice cream at Sammy and Julie's ice cream place in Sierra Vista. But I thought, hmm, no, I don't want people to say about me. You know when Don sits around the house? He sits around the house. So, got the wire and a few other things. Let's check it out, see if it fits. And lo and behold, I've even uh, got some leftover. Better to have it leftover. 
and not enough was the lesson that I learned. I kind of scared this guy, I guess. He came dropping into my trench. Oh, well, anyway, I think it's a female tarantula. So any of you folks who know a lot about arachnids, then you can kind of let me know. I know females are smaller, so I think that's it. So I'm going to let her hide back here in a, oops, safe place. Try not to get her too upset here. There. There, we let her go. Okay, we're making progress. So first thing I'll do is tighten it up. There, that's not going to go anywhere. Next, we will attach the grinding wire. There, got it. Okay, that's really well attached. Good connection. Now with the rebar again, I'll just, I'll just bury that. And if I need to support it in some way, um, I can. And to make the soil a little better, I'll turn it into clay. A little bit of water. Supportive rocks in there. There, much better. So I just remembered I have this grounding rod clamp to help hold this in place on the rebar. So I'll just tighten down on this grounding clamp. That'll make that good and solid. There we go. So now I've got the grounding wire running through this um, grounding lug. That's attached to the panel frame. So making a good connection here, so I'll just cut off the excess. So we got this teeny screwdriver for that business. Yeah, that's a good solid connection. Great. So what I did here, folks, is I added some crushed rock I had left over from my septic install. And that was at the suggestion of my subscriber, Lauren. So if this trench has water in it and the solar panels get hit, then the lightning strike will run right down here to this grounding rod. So what I'm doing here, folks, is I've got this electrical tape and I'm making these color combinations so that I can identify two different connections here with this solar panel wire. And because I've got a lot going on here with lots of wires con connecting to these panels, that makes it really easy whenever I have to connect and disconnect to pop them back together in the right order. So that gives you an idea how I did this. I'm sure there's a lot better ways to do this, but um, I think this will work fine. And again, the sole purpose being to identify everything so that when all this is apart, I can put it all back together easily. So even though I've got all the cables now identified by their respective color combos, um, this is still a mess. There's cables everywhere, um, just not good. Um, I don't want some big old jackrabbit coming and stretching as tall as he can and nibbling on the cables. So I'm going to find a way to put all those up out of the way. So I placed these cables as neat as I could and suspended them with some hooks that I got at Ace Hardware. Did the trick and I was happy. So a special thanks to subscriber Lauren. 
uh, who provided lots of technical advice on this. Really appreciate that. And also Bill, who I followed a lot of what he did with his solar array. So thank you, Bill. Well, I'm sure among all of my subscribers, there's a lot of electricians and people that know this stuff really well and would have done things differently. And if you would have, then you're welcome to leave comments below. I read them all, so it'll be interesting to know what you thought. So I hope this video was helpful, folks. Uh, I, I learned a lot as I was doing all this. A lot of hard work putting in the grounding rod and all that stuff. But, you know, that's all just part of it. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell thing. And that'll let you know when the next video is coming up. And I really appreciate you being here as always. Thanks so much. And we'll see you on the next video.